Well, global affairs analyst Michael Botucu was on the scene within 24 hours and has closely followed developments of this case. He joins us in Amsterdam at the media centre next to where the trial is underway. Michael, what a significant day this is. Uh, tell me what this feels like for you, having been there so quickly and have followed it to this point. Sure. Good to be with you, Bev. Well, for me, this is kind of the start of the completion of a circle, a long, big circle from the time I and my team stood there on the crash site and then a few days later in that horrible, horrible scene in front of that refrigerated train with the bodies loaded on. We didn't even know at that time whether those bodies, which as you pointed out included 38 Australians, would even make it out of the conflict zone uh, into government control uh, territory and then onto the Netherlands. But they did. And here we are today, almost six days later. And uh, Bev, uh, I, I mean, I'm just um, a bit white faced right now. Um, uh, just a, a few seconds ago, uh, they finished reading out the 298 names of the victims. And it was just, I think, the most somber uh, moment of the morning. Uh, where it was mostly procedural, but amid all of that, we heard the names read out. And as you can imagine, it took quite some time. I bet indeed. Um, the four accused, of course, we know they're not going to appear. The court has now ruled that the, the, the case can go ahead with or without them. One accused, though, has sent significant legal representation. How do you read that? Yeah, Mr. Uh, Pulatov, who uh, was quite high up in the Russian intelligence services, who, according to Bellingcat, uh, was very involved in the movement of that book missile launcher, and uh, apparently it's firing. So I, I do think that um, at least one of the four suspects is taking this very seriously. Um, you would be amazed at the amount of detail they have on all of these people, right down to their home addresses. So uh, your name has now been published. It's out there. You are a suspect in a mass murder it can't be a very good feeling. So he's going to probably throw everything he has at this to defend himself. It's going to take up to 18 months, we understand. Um, yeah. What sense have you got yeah. as to what the prosecution's going to lead? What are we going to hear over that period of time? Well, they, uh, they seem to have uh, really rock-solid evidence collected over a long period of time, and uh, including two, un uh, two unverified uh, media reports here up to 13 eyewitnesses who have come forward. So I, I think the sense here, and of course it's being followed very closely here in the Netherlands, that uh, they have an ironclad case. But again, it has to be said uh, that these suspects are being charged in absentia. Uh, only, as I said, only one has representation. So um, talking to the relatives yesterday, Bev, I can tell you that uh, they, they feel sad in the sense that they don't feel any of these four will ever face a day behind bars. So very difficult for justice to be served. Uh, how is Russia responding uh, throughout this? They've, of course, repeatedly denied any involvement. <clears throat> Yeah, well, um, this morning we learned how difficult it was to serve the legal summons on the suspects. The uh, cooperation from the Russian side has been very minimal, uh, including in the investigation. And then the Russian uh, propaganda machine is in overdrive right now, putting out uh, rumors, uh, counter arguments, uh, all kinds of stuff to really, you know, they're typically playing by their playbook to create confusion and doubt. So I think this will go on for quite some time throughout the trial. And when you talk of those families, Michael, as you point out, probably no justice. Do you think it will be closure of some sort if uh, at the, by the end of this trial? Absolutely. Uh, they've been waiting for this day for a long time. Uh, what they tell me, Bev, is that we want to know one thing. Who did it? Who gave that final order and why? But. You know, I also have to point out that um, not only because of coronavirus, but because the way the trial is going to proceed over so long a period of time in kind of small little batches, it's going to be very difficult for them to be here in person. And I was told this morning by some that they couldn't even be allowed into the courtroom right across from me. They have to view it from a remote complex. But very quickly, Bev, they are together. Uh, they do have uh, support, psychosocial support, uh, uh, victim support. So that's really important for them. The Dutch are taking really good care of them. Them. Michael, we appreciate you joining us uh, on the start of this very important day. Thank you. My pleasure.